Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial and this is going to be all about looking at Entile. If you do enjoy the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. First of all, I'd just like to pass on my congratulations to this individual for passing the 70-461 querying Microsoft SQL Server 2012 and 2014 exam. Uh, big well done to yourself. And don't forget, if you are taking any certifications at the moment or have recently just passed and would like a shout out on the channel, please do let me know. Moving on to what is covered in this video. So it's all about Entile. We're going to be looking at the overview and syntax. So what do we use Entile for? Explanation of partitions and tiles. A poor example that I have witnessed in production that's caused a lot of problems using Entile and common uses for Entile as well. So Entile belongs to the family of ranking functions along with row, rank and dense rank and it is probably the least popular. Uh, what I mean by that, it's probably the least used. Row and rank are definitely more common. So Entile is used to divide data into tiles, which are effectively subgroups, if you like, and that will become apparent when we go through some examples. So it returns a big int value, and it returns the number of the tile to which the row belongs, which will become apparent shortly when we go through some examples. So the syntax is Entile. And in brackets there, the N in white is representing a value, uh, an integer value that we pass to the function. Uh, we then have our over clause. We can create partitions, so partition by is optional. And then as it's a ranking function, order by is included to uh, make sense of the data. But as you've seen in previous videos on my channel, we can set that to select null if it's not relevant for what we're doing. But particularly, as this is a ranking function, we do tend to use an order by clause with it, which makes sense. Okay, we've jumped over to SQL Server Management Studio now. And for this example, and to allow you to follow along, we've got some scripts here that are just going to create some very simple tables for us. So I'm creating two tables, sale and sale channel. So sale channel just consists of a sale channel ID and a channel, and that's just going to be in store or online. And then we're going to have our sale table, which is just going to reference our sale channel ID. And then we're just going to have a sale date and a sale amount. So I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible to go through these examples. And we can see here, we're just gonna insert uh, various rows. There's not a great amount of data. So we're just gonna work with a small set of data. Typically in production, we'd be using a larger amount, bigger tables, larger amount of rows, but we just want to keep it as simple as possible to go through some examples. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute that query now and then we'll move over to another query window. So this query is just joining sale to our sale channel table. It's giving them some aliases and all we're returning, the only columns that we're interested in, sale date, sale amount and sale channel. So I'll go ahead and execute this as an example. We can see down here we've got 18 rows of data. So I'll just have a quick glance through there. And I've inserted data for the purposes of this example. It, they're just on the first date of every month in 2018. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with a basic example of Entile. So I'm just going to edit this query here. And as we saw in the introduction, we open with Entile. And then we have within the brackets, we're going to, as we can see, the entile function requires one argument, and that is how many tiles we want to divide our data into. So we're going to keep it nice and simple here, because we've got 18 rows, we're just gonna divide it into three tiles. Then we have our over clause, and again, as mentioned, we then need our order by. And for simplicity here, we're just gonna order by sale 
dot sale date so it makes sense to order by a date and we're just going to return that column as tile so we can see the syntax there as mentioned in the introduction it's relatively straightforward and I'm going to go ahead and execute that query and see the values that are being returned now we can see we had 18 rows we specified an end tile of three we wanted three tiles and we can see that there are six rows belonging to each tile if I just scroll down the results grid there so very relatively straightforward we then have our 18 rows of data divided into three tiles which are effectively groups or subgroups if you like so yes a tile just means grouping data but we don't because we have group by partition by and end tile we don't refer to them as groups we have to refer to them as something different but on a hierarchical hierarchical basis we would have group by first then partition by then our tiles so we're going to now have a look at what happens if we change this to a number that doesn't divide evenly by the number of rows so let's say number five doesn't easily go into 18 rows so what we're saying there is take our 18 rows divide them into five tiles so if we go ahead and execute this query now if we have a look at tile one we can see four rows are in there tile two again four rows tile three again four rows but tile four has only got three rows and tile five has only got three rows as well so when we can't easily divide the data say if we have a remainder that then goes through the first tiles so what we've done here is we've divided our data of 18 rows into five tiles so we can easily have five tiles of three but then we still have three left over and then they start going into the first tile so tile one gets another row tile two gets another row tile three gets another row tile four and five don't because we don't have any more remaining rows so let's just switch that back for simplicity and go ahead and execute that so we're working with a nice even distribution of rows here now let's have a look at introducing a partition by so i'm just going to write out i'm just going to copy and paste this to the next line so we can see the differences when we add a partition and we can see we've got two sale channels we've got in-store or online so our customers can purchase goods in two different ways now let's say we want to partition by our sale channel so again partition by is effectively adding another grouping level to our query so we're going to partition by sale dot sale channel simply and we'll call this uh, partition tile there we go so if we go ahead and execute this query now that sale channel doesn't belong to that table so I'll just amend that and we'll go ahead and execute that now and then we can start to see a difference in the result so we've got our tile which is without the partition and then we've got partition tile which is with and if we have a look at the results grid we can see some slight differences here so tile in the first tile we have three rows whereas in the partition tile we actually have four rows and that's because we have 12 rows that belong to in store so we're taking those 12 rows and we're then dividing them into three tiles that give us four in each and then in online we only have six rows so each tile then has two rows each so when we add a partition by with further grouping our data we're saying split our data into in this case we've only got two partitions we've got in store and online then for each of those individual partitions apply mtile over the top of it and divide that data into three groups so because for in store we've got 12 rows 
that then becomes each tile then contains four but for online we've got six rows so then each of those tiles then only contains two rows so that is how we can further effectively subgroup our data using partition so I'm just going to remove that and take off the results grid from now and now we're going to be looking at a particular poor example that I have seen used in production so I'm just going to add a where clause here and we're just going to filter our data where the sale channel equals install so as mentioned previously we have 12 rows of data and if we look at the sale date I have done this on purpose so we have one row for each month so we have a sale on the first of each month now because Entile is used to divide our data into even groups I've often seen in production people use this to calculate quarters so if I was to change this to we have four quarters a year if I was to change that to four and just for readability I'm going to give this the alias of quarter so we go ahead and execute that query now and because I've got 12 rows one representing each month I can divide it nicely by four and we have three in each quarter so we have our first quarter of 2018 our second quarter and now all the data looks good it looks correct however as we know in production this is often not the case that we would have an even number of sales throughout the year so an example here of major problems this can cause is if I go ahead and insert a couple more rows so if I insert two rows here these are sales for January and February so I'm going to go ahead and insert those two rows and I come back to the original query and again I'm using this to divide the data into quarters I've now taken it from 12 to 14 and as mentioned in the introduction what that's going to do is divide our data by the number it can so we will still have four tiles but then we have two remainder and then let's see what's going to happen to those rows so again because we have a two remainder it's going to go to tile one give them an extra row and tile two and give them an extra row and let's see the impact this now has on our quarter particularly if we're using this in reports and outputting them to executives or analysts then we can have a look now and see that we've inserted two additional rows for January and February and they belong to quarter one which is correct but when we get down to March which does belong to quarter one that has now gone into quarter two so we can see there there's going to be a massive impact on the data so that is really going to cause us major issues in the numbers we could potentially be outputting so now I'm going to go through a couple of examples of how I would typically use Entile and it's not a function I use that often but I'm going to just run this query again to just get the tables into the original state that we started working with and I'll just change this back to type okay so we start, we're back to where we started before we discuss that poor example so typically how I would use Entol is exactly its purpose is to divide data into logical tiles so if I want to work with a sample of data and I know I've only got a small amount of rows here I'm only working with 12 but say I've got a table that contains millions of rows and I've created a new store procedure or a new process that I want to test running data through but I don't want to run it against the whole table at the same time so simply what I would typically do would be to drop this query within a CTE as I want to just calculate a sample and then I might just select all from that CTE where my tile value equals 3 for example
just amend that to show correctly. So now I've taken my 12 rows, divided it into tiles, and then I only want to work with a sample of that data. Let's say I've got a million rows, but I only want to process 10,000. So I can simply divide that data into tiles and then just select a random tile 